Hi kids! Today we are going to read a wordless picture book. A wordless picture book is a book with no words, so the reader gets to make up their own story. Each time you read the story, the plot line will be the same, but the individual events could be different. The reader makes up the story using inferences. Inferences are in some assumptions made based upon background information and information found in the text. The author and illustrator of our book today is Daniel Mieres. He has written several other books, including Pardon Me, Float, and Bring Me a Rock. I chose this book because it shows a growing friendship between a young girl and her neighbor, a young boy. I also enjoy the pictures because as their friendship blossoms, the colors of the leaves change from black and white to all sorts of colors, including red, yellow, orange, and green. Our objective today comes from the gold curriculum, and it is gold objective 18, comprehends and responds to other books and texts. Now, if we take a look at the front cover of the book, what do we think the story is going to be about? I see a little girl peeking her head around the tree to look at the little boy. Maybe she might talk to him. We might see and find out. The first end page of this book says a boy, a girl, a surprise, and a friendship. And it's just gray. Might be a little foreshadowing. We'll go to the next page and see what we can find. The title page says That Neighbor Kid by Daniel Mieres. On here, there is a moving truck in the neighborhood. Or do we see it? It says move it. Hmm. What kind of inferences can we make about that moving truck? I might make an inference about a family has just moved into a new neighborhood. On this page, we see the little boy sitting by the tree reading a book. And the moving truck is really zoomed in, so all we see is the M on it. And this page is still in black and white. Can we see the little girl poking her head out through the window? I wonder what she's doing. So the little boy is sitting on the ground reading a book. Can we make an inference about him? I wonder if he's reading to the book to try to learn new things. Now the little boy is hanging from the tree upside down. Do you guys ever hang from your tree upside down? Sounds like his, or looks like his book says, Living in Trees. Oh, and the little girl moved. Do we see her? She's poking her head up over the fence. Do we see the toolbox on the bottom right page? I wonder what that's about. Now the little boy looks like he's moving a piece of the fence. And the little girl's still watching. But this time we can see her whole body. The toolbox is missing this time. The little girl is hiding behind the bush. Why do we think she keeps hiding from the little boy? And the little boy has taken a lot of pieces of the fence. As we look at the page, we can see him carrying the pieces of wood. Can we make a prediction of what he will do with these pieces? What do you think? Now the little boy is climbing a tree, I think. He has a hammer in his back pocket and a bucket of nails. The little girl is still watching him, hiding behind the tree. Do we think this is the same tree from earlier that he was reading by? He's gone further up the tree now, so all we can see is his bucket, but uh-oh, he dropped his hammer. Now what is he going to do? The little girl looks surprised. What is she going to do? Is this big hole in the fence, is that where the wood was? Did the little boy make that hole? Now the little girl is climbing the ladder and she has the hammer in her hand. I think we can make a couple of inferences on this page. The little girl might help build something. 
and the hammer might be used to help build whatever's going on. What do we think they're going to build in the tree? The little boy looks worried. He's looking at that piece of paper. He might be getting ready to build a tree house. What do you think? Do you think he's seen the little girl yet with the hammer? Oh, the little girl and the little boy are both saying hi. On the left page, we see the little girl is showing the boy that she grabbed his hammer and is possibly wanting to help him build the tree house. And on the right page, he's showing her the bucket of nails so she can help. Do we notice the leaves are starting to change colors? They're yellow and orange, whereas before on the left, they were all black and white. On the left side, the boy and the girl are both looking at the piece of paper. And the little girl has that looks like a pencil in her hand. Looks like they are planning to build the treehouse together and more and more leaves are changing colors. In the top picture on the right side, the little boy is sawing a piece of wood as the girl holds it for him. And on the top right picture, they're putting the piece of wood to, uh, together so they can build the floor. And in the bottom picture on the right side, they're nailing a piece of wood so to build the wall. Looks like they're making a pretty good team. And the leaves keep changing colors. What do we think that symbolizes? On this page, the children are laying down while on the floor that they built. They seem to be happy with the progress they are making with their treehouse. The little boy has a leaf in his hand and the little girl is smiling at the boy. You can see their map of what their thought process was. Looks like they may have crossed out a number or two. Look, this page is more colorful than the other ones. Since the children are happy, can you make a connection? What is an activity you like to do at home with your neighborhood friends that makes you happy? Oh no, the kids are getting messy. The little girl is flinging paint at the boy. My inference is the little boy will be covered in blue paint from the little girl's paintbrush. This page has a lot of yellow on it. Looks like they're happier. Do we think that more color means that the children are happier in the book? On this page, the boy and the girl are sitting down drinking their juice. They seem happy with their hard day's work and they're taking a break. Sounds like, looks like the sun is setting behind them and they built a pretty big tree house. Now it is nighttime and the outside is dark. The only light can be seen is from their bedroom windows. The boy and the girl are both waving to each other from their separate houses. Looks like they are both saying good night. That is the end of our story. Now that we have finished the book, That Neighbor Kid, I would like you to compare it to Float, another book by Daniel Mieres. In Float, it's about another young boy where he made a boat out of a piece of paper and it floated away from him. Whereas in That Neighbor Kid, it's about a young boy and a young girl and they built a tree house. Both books used color in special places, and they both had boys that were making something. I would like you to add one more thing to each part of the compare and contrast Venn diagram. After that, I have one more Venn diagram for you to do. Finally, I would like you to compare and contrast wordless picture books by different authors. For mine, I did that neighborhood that Neighbor Kid by Daniel Mieres and Dandelion's Dream by Yoko Tanaka. And that neighborhood, that neighbor kid, it's about a young boy and a young girl, and together they built a treehouse. 
in Dandelion's Dream, it's about a lion on a journey, and he is following his dream. Both of them use color for special effects, and the main characters both look happy in the end. I would like you to add one more thing to each part of the Venn diagram so you can see the different ways that authors write wordless picture books. That is the end of our lesson today. Thank you for listening.